You guys have been asking for it, so here it is. I'm going to cover how to set up your own XMPP server. Now, if you haven't heard of XMPP, it's a technology that's actually been around for a while. It stands for the Extensible Messaging and Presence Protocol. It's an open XML technology for real-time communication, which provides a wide range of applications, including messaging, presence, and collaboration. So it's very open and very extensible. I would pretty much say that XMPP is to messaging protocols in the same way that GNU slash Linux is to operating systems. You can pretty much do whatever you want with it and there's nothing really holding you back besides, I guess, limitations in your creativity or technical ability. Uh, it's also fairly secure. So like if we take a look at uh, the servers page here, which lists some projects that are using the protocol because again, XMPP, it isn't really an app by itself. It's a protocol that you would use to build your own chat app with, or you could use one of these projects. Uh, like if we take a look at the Astra chat here, uh, we can see that this is used by like the US Army, um, gov.uk, I guess that's UK government, NASA, the Marines, Government of Canada. So yeah, there's a bunch of different uh, government organizations that at least feel like the security is good enough for them, so it's probably going to be good enough for you as well. So why should you care about this when there are dozens of other chat apps out there that are way easier to use, they don't require you to set up a server or anything else like that? Um, well, let's go ahead and compare XMPP to other private secure messaging applications uh, like Telegram or Signal, because hopefully at this point you know that something like WhatsApp is compromised. So both of those programs are open source and they allow you to create reproducible builds so that you can verify that there's no shenanigans going on at the application level. But these apps are not federated, so they don't allow you to run your own server. Uh, and so it's not as open as it could be. You're pretty much relying on that server code to work uh, and not to be spooky. And you're relying on the companies behind those apps to stay true to their original direction, to not sell out and then start adding spookiness to their servers. So with something like XMPP, you're gonna be fully in control from the client to the server. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with setting up our own server. Now this is something that you could host on your home internet if you wanted to, uh, but I'm going to be setting it up to run on a VPS. Also, because of how minimal the XMPP services tend to be, uh, some are a little bit heavier than other depending on what bundle you go with, but they generally tend to be fairly light. So you could totally run this on a web server that already has other stuff running. Um, you know, maybe Nginx to serve a website or maybe you have uh, like a Minecraft server going. You don't have to go and then have a de separate dedicated server just for this. Uh, now, of course, before deploying any application to a server, you should first make sure that the server is secure. Uh, so go ahead and uh, whatever operating system you choose to use, update it. Uh, set a secure root password or use key-based authentication for your root user. Um, and then install your SSL certificate with Let's Encrypt and block unused ports with IP tables. All right, now that our server has some decent security added to it, we can go ahead and start deploying the service. Uh, I'm gonna be using Prosody for this example. Uh, I don't know if I'm always gonna be using uh, this particular application. Based off the research I've been doing, I might end up switching to OpenFire or uh, e jabber d but one of the cool things about prosody is that it is written in lua and has a lot of community modules available to extend it and this is their website by the way so they have the binary package available for many different uh, distributions i'm using a debian server over here uh, so you could just install that with sudo apt install uh, Prosody, but it's also available for Fedora, Red Hat, Gentoo, Arch Linux, uh, BSD, um, even Mac OS if you're using that for a home server. And then of course, if your particular uh, Linux distro or uh, BSD isn't here, then you can just go ahead and compile it uh, from the source code yourself. Uh, now, once you install the binary package or uh, whichever package, well, 
if you install the binary, if you compile it from source, you might have to make this yourself. But you should have uh, this directory that gets created. Um, and then you'll have these files in it. Well, not the uh, search plus key.pem. We'll get into what that is in a little bit. But the main one that we're going to be working with is this uh, prosody.cfg.lua. So let's go ahead and change the settings in there. So this first line that you're going to want to change is the virtual host. So this is going to say local host on your system uh, when it's default. And then you just want to change this to whatever the domain name of the server that you're going to use is. Um, I don't think you necessarily need to have a domain. I think that you can use this uh, just with a regular IP address, but then you won't be able to federate it. This is also where you would go and start adding different components because, again, with XMPP, you're basically adding whatever components you want and, and none that you don't. So um, this uh, like component here is a multi-user chat room. Um, but I'm not going to go over all the different uh, components because then this video would take forever to finish. So now that we have our virtual host, uh, actually, I'm going to make this bigger just because I don't need that other page right now. Um, so once you've got that, go ahead and save. And then we want to add a user. Uh, so the command for that is going to be prosody ctl add user. And the syntax is going to go like this. It's going to be kind of like an email. So temp user, that's going to be whatever username you want the user to have. And then at your domain, so basenerd.com in my case. And then you want to go ahead and create a password for that user. Uh, so I'm just going to create a basic one to test them with. All right, so now we have a user. Uh, you're probably also going to want to make this connection secure. You're going to want to make it use HTTPS because uh, otherwise people might be able to see your communications. So I'm going to assume that you used Let's Encrypt to just create a free SSL certificate. Um, so the way that you can go ahead and feed that to XMPP, there's, there's two files that you have to give it which is your private key.pem and your full chain.pem. Uh, now there's a couple of ways that you could do it. Um, you could just put it inside of the uh, prosody cfg.lua manually. Uh, but what I preferred to do is just combine those two files uh, into one, like into a copy, and then basically give that copy, that one file to XMPP. Uh, so the way uh, that I did that, the first command is uh, this one here. So we're just combining the private key.pem and the full chain.pem into this file, cert plus key.pem. And then you can import it with this command. Uh, so it's going to import the file cert plus key.pem uh, that you see right here. And then you should have uh, your SSL working. Oh, one other thing, uh, although this next step is optional, you can set an admin. Uh, so if we go to, uh, here it is. So you should have this um, line here, admins equals, and then just put in all of the users that you want to be an admin. So like I already have Kenny at basenerd.com. Uh, if I wanted to add that, what was it, temp user, I would just put temp user at basenerd dot com, uh, so on and so forth. It's basically the same syntax as like a list. Uh, so there you go. That's how you do admins. Uh, now we need to tell Nginx to serve this. So go ahead and vim into, um, well, you could just type this command and it'll create the prosody.conf. If it doesn't exist already, it probably doesn't on your machine. Uh, and then this is where you go ahead and more or less copy this, but just have it go to whichever uh, domain you're going to be using. So instead of uh, chat.basenerd.com, actually, I think that should just be uh, regular base nerd because I don't think I have it on the chat. Um, so yeah, you would just change this to whatever your domain is and then go ahead and save the file. Then go ahead and create your root web directory. Uh, so just 
make dir var www and then prosody uh, and you also want to change the ownership of this to your nginx user uh, you don't want it to be owned by root so sudo chown uh, wwdata that's just the default nginx user if you changed your nginx username to something else then put in whatever it is uh, and then point to that directory and uh, add r at the end then you want to reload nginx so sudo systemctl reload nginx and so now that we are set up and we have a user created you can go ahead and connect to the server from an xmpp client now there's a whole bunch of them out there and many forks of them are available as well like if you're on android uh, you can go into the fdroid store and look for xmpp and then you'll find applications like uh, atalk conversations and blabber.im to name a few here on linux there is an application called pigeon that you can use uh, and there's several other applications that you can use on linux as well pigeon is just the one that i'll be showing you guys um, so this is what you get when you start up Pigeon for the first time or whenever you don't have an account added to it. Uh, so I'll just add my account info in here. Um, so our username is going to be temp user. And let's also change our protocol to XMPP. As you can see, there's a whole bunch uh, that you can use with Pigeon. Uh, and the domain is going to be basednerd.com and put in the password. And yeah, let's use an icon. Um, let's see, Oop, didn't mean to click that. Um, all right, let's pick a good one. There we go. All right, so we're gonna add, and there we go. So then you just invite some other friends to use the service. Uh, of course, since you're gonna be the administrator of this, you gotta make sure that your server is uh, working. Um, for the most part though, if you set it up properly, you don't really have anything to worry about unless your provider just happens to have uh, some outages. Uh, but you now have a method of communications that you are fully in control over. There's no need to worry about the alphabet boys or some big tech billionaire collecting data about your conversations and sharing it with others uh, at their weird parties where they worship Moloch.